This is Crosscut Reports. I'm Maliha Sayed. Today, as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday, we're chatting with podcast host and Crosscut editor-at-large, Rachel Bell. Yeah. So you're Rachel Bell, sometimes Rachel Bell Krampfner. And sometimes, because I really like ham, I'm Rachel Hampfner. Rachel. <laughs> Rachel is the host and producer of Your Last Meal, a podcast that asks celebrities a central question. What would you eat for your final dish? In each episode of her show, Rachel asks celebrity guests, from Greta Gerwig to William Shatner, about these last meals before digging into the culture, history, or science of the foods that they choose. In this episode of Crosscut Reports, we talk with Rachel about Thanksgiving, including her favorite dish to eat on the holiday, before sharing a preview of her latest episode, which is out now. Can you just introduce yourself and tell me about your show? Yes. Uh, I'm Rachel Bell, and my show is called Your Last Meal. I've been doing this podcast for about seven years now. Uh, Teeny Bragg Alert, it is a James Beard Award nominee. I saw that. Best part of my career. I saw finalist. Yeah, finalist. I saw that. Yeah, just happy to be here. Don't care that I didn't win at all. (laughs) (laughs) And Not bitter. Not bitter at all. And the show is this. I interview a celebrity every episode. Um, I've had people on like Greta Gerwig, Neil deGrasse Tyson, William Shatner, Jewel, Jack Johnson, uh, all kinds of people. And then we talk about their careers, their lives, and then of course food and their last meal. And then I bring other guests on to talk about the science, the history, the culture of that dish. So for example, when I had fashion designer Betsy Johnson on, we were trying to think of like, where do food and fashion intersect? Because it's not always like this direct, this was their last meal and this is the history of it. So we ended up having the guy who designed Lady Gaga's meat dress on. um, And he is from Argentina. And he called his family's butcher in Argentina when he was designing this dress. By the way, if you're not familiar, um, this was a long time ago. Lady Gaga wore a dress made out of actual meat to the VMA VMAs, Awards. Yeah. yeah. VMAs. And everyone. That's like saying ATM machine. <laughs> VMA Awards. VMA Awards. <laughs> <laughs> so he called his butcher, and the best cut of meat to make this meat dress was skirt steak. And it was not, this is a question that everyone has, it was not raw meat. This was cured meat, right? They had to do something to it so right? that it wouldn't go off and It wouldn't be, be like a public hazard. <laughs> I think the they VMAs. shellacked it, kind of. So it was jerky-esque, but it still had to be soft enough so she could move in it. Right. I have to ask Everything. you this, though. By the end of the night, was the meat smelling? Oh, yes, but I kind of liked it. You know? Oh, my God. So that's like one example. Yeah. And it's usually like 30 to 40 minutes. And yeah, so if you are someone who likes food, if you like celebrity interviews, if you like history, um, it kind of hits all of those points. Yeah. And it also, I feel like even though it's about your last meal, it's not a morbid show. Like, this is just really a chance to talk about food and explore food, right? And, like, yeah, understand it. Yeah, I always like to be clear about that. You know, <laughs> there's no political affiliations. I am personally against the death penalty, but it doesn't get into that kind of thing. Although there is one episode that um, my guest was Prodigy, who has since passed. He's a rapper, and he had spent time in prison. He wrote a book, a cookbook, about all of the food that the inmates would cook using like what they stole from the cafeteria and the commissary. So that episode, we actually did talk about prison um, and actual last meals. But every other episode is not about that. It's fun. It's It's fun. It's just a, you know, excuse to talk about food. And, you know, if you have like a celebrity that you follow and you really love, maybe you've kind of read the same thing about them over and over. This kind of opens up a new side of people. Like they haven't been asked these questions very often. And, you know, sometimes we talk about childhood memories or like funny stories surrounding food. And so everybody eats. Most people love food. It's kind of a universal topic that brings kind of like a joy out of people in a new way. Like sometimes when we talk about food, someone will say like, I've never told anyone this before. I've never talked about this before. And so, yeah, it's fun. So you have a Thanksgiving episode. 
And that's basically like an amalgamation of previous episodes you've done. Could you talk about it? Yeah, so this is the first time we've done a holiday special like this. Um, The idea was to split the podcast into courses Mm. um, because I looked back at the list of last meals and I was like, oh, there's actually like a lot of Thanksgiving-y foods in here. Um, And there is some new content too, but um, we start at the beginning with a salad. And before I say anything more, what is your opinion of having a salad on Thanksgiving? Okay, this is interesting because I feel like in recent years, the thing that I've heard is like you look at a Thanksgiving plate and it's all brown. Mm-hmm. It's just like gravy and potatoes and mashed potatoes and turkey. Mushy beige. Mushy beige. <laughs> Scary. But then I feel like a salad would like liven it. I don't know if that's the kind of salad that you're starting with, but I'm assuming it like adds green into the mix. It does not. Okay. But <laughs> is I it agree mushy beige? with you. <laughs> it's some colors. It's mushy oh. some colors. Oh. Yeah. I agree that I think like a salad is really good because it's crisp and it's crunchy, but like it just never makes it because people are like, we're not here to eat salad. (laughs) We're here to eat stuffing. Yeah. So the first part, and of course, I'm not going to give everything away because I want people to go and listen to your last meal, listen to the episode. Um, So the first course is this salad, country star Martina McBride. She has this family recipe. It's called fluff salad. And in the Midwest, she's from Kansas, which kind of borders like Midwesty, Southy. In the Midwest, salad means something very different. There is something called a cookie salad that's really popular. And it's like layers of Cool Whip with canned mandarin oranges and cookies. And they call that a salad. Okay. There is something called a Snickers salad that's basically the same thing, but with like chunks of Snickers <laughs> in it. Snickers I would eat that. <laughs> yeah. And of course, everybody knows about like potato salad and macaroni salad. That's not very salad no. either as far. So I'm not going to tell you what the fluff salad is because in the business, this is called a cheese. Yeah. But I will tell you it is like nothing I've ever heard of before <laughs> and does have a Cool Whip component. <laughs> But also has cheese in it. (laughs) So it's like a Midwest delicacy. And so this episode, you're going to basically go through the different courses of a Thanksgiving meal based on what previous celebrity guests have told you. Exactly. So, yeah, that's where we start. We move into cranberry sauce, sweet potato casserole with marshmallows. That's um, with Zasha Mamet, who Uh, she was in the TV show Girls. She was in Flight Attendant. The flight attendant. Um, And then we get into stuffing with Greta Gerwig. Oh, my gosh. And then, of course, we have to talk about turkey. Controversial. Controversial. Yeah. Of course, no one has ever chosen turkey for their last meal. I would think you're a psychopath if you're like, I just want a, like a, a turkey breast. A turkey. <laughs> a nice dry turkey breast. <laughs> it's always so dry. It's always so dry. Why? So I brought in a food history expert to talk about why do we have turkey on Thanksgiving? Yeah. It's one of those things you just go through the motions and you eat it when like every other protein is better. Steak, love it. Love it. You know, roast chicken, great. Salmon. And they're like, no, 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 no. We're not doing any of those. So we talk about the history of why we eat turkey and also kind of the history of Thanksgiving becoming a holiday. And I'm not talking about what we were told in school, in elementary school with like the pilgrims and that whole story and the Native Americans. It's This is like much later during the Civil War. So, again, I'm not going to tell you all the details. No, you can't give it. You can't give it away. But that is a good like preview. Like we're seeing what's to come. Mm-hmm. But people are going to have to listen. What is your relationship to Thanksgiving? Like, did you grow up celebrating it? Do you celebrate it now? Yeah. Okay. I grew up celebrating it. I celebrate it now. Mm -hmm. I think Thanksgiving is an interesting holiday because it's one of the few that everyone celebrates that's not religious, you know? And so, like, I don't celebrate Christmas, for example. I don't celebrate Easter. Mm -hmm. But most people celebrate Thanksgiving And one of my favorite things is talking to people who are immigrants about what is on their Thanksgiving table. Yeah. Because, you know, you end up a lot of the time with these amalgamations of like, sure, maybe you'll have a turkey. But if your parents are from China, maybe it's like kind of like a rice, you know, Chinese sausage stuffing kind of thing. Or they might lacquer it like they would a duck Um, or, you know, like. My ex-boyfriend, his parents were from Egypt, and in at their Thanksgiving, not only did they have Middle Eastern food, they also served hot dogs oh. <laughs> because they thought, this is America. That's Americans like hot dogs. Americans love a hot dog. And after dinner, we all retired to the couch and watched Celine Dion in Vegas. <laughs> <gasps> 
I would be curious to know, do you have a favorite Thanksgiving dish and then a controversial least favorite Thanksgiving Mm. dish? I think my favorite, as a kid, it was always stuffing. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, I just really love mashed potatoes. It's so good. Because... I think through the year, people don't put as much fat in them as they do on Thanksgiving <laughs> for some reason. And so, like, when you use, like, heavy cream and a whole stick of butter, mm-hmm. that's when the magic happens. And they're just so creamy. And it's like baby food. But it's I love it. It's so good. Yeah, it's like mm. what you eat when you get your wisdom teeth out. You're just yes. shoveling yes. Like fat. Yes. Beige, Beige and mushy. What about you? What's your favorite? Okay, mine is a controversial one. And it's very Southern. But I love a green bean casserole. Mm. That's, like, my go-to. I did make it a few years ago for the first time. And it it was so delicious. It was a New York Times recipe. And then I tried to make it the next year and it was so embarrassing. It was like soup. It was so oh, bad. No. It just like didn't turn out. But so did you make yours homemade without the cream of whatever without the, soup? The mush- yeah, the cream of mushroom, Fancy. which I always love. But I did try to like impress and I was like putting it together and it was chef's kiss. But that is a hot take because not everyone loves it. I always wanted it as a kid and my parents wouldn't make it because that just wasn't what we ate. And my mom was always so horrified because she grew up with a single mother and they didn't have very much money and they ate a lot of TV dinners and things out of cans. So when she had kids, she's like, I'm never doing that. (laughs) And then my dad is from Israel and, you know, didn't grow up and grew up on a farm. And so they never really had, you know, processed things and canned things. Right. So both of my parents were horrified and confused (laughs) as to why I wanted to be a little Midwestern child. (laughs) I always wanted, can we just have casseroles with cream of mushroom soup so and, good. you know, put some chips on Little top. crispy onion. And they were like, no, no, <laughs> no, we're trying to like do something better. And I was like, I don't I want, want it. that. I want a hungry man dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. And we're going to play a snippet of your episode, not the whole thing, because people are going to go to your last meal. That's right. And listen to the full. That's right. They are. But thank you so much for joining. Thanks, Maliha. Yeah, this was so fun. Since we already started the meal with marshmallows, we might as well double down. What is your opinion on sweet potatoes with marshmallows? I mean, here's the thing. I grew up with them. So I'm like, obviously. That's actor Zasha Mamet. I love her. She played Shoshana in the TV show Girls, and she starred in The Flight Attendant. She also published a very cute collection of food-related essays called My First Popsicle. Why not? I mean, it is literally a dessert that you were adding to the main course. I don't know. I mean, especially as a child, I thought they were epic. You have marshmallows on top of a sweet potato. I'm a big sweet potato lover. So I was just like, this is a hat on a hat. This is the best hat on top of the best hat. (laughs) Zasha's husband doesn't share her excitement for the polarizing Thanksgiving casserole. He didn't grow up with them. And so it's less like an aversion and more sort of a confusion. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't understand. Like if you put chocolate on the turkey, he's like, I don't get it. Yeah, but that's just Uh, a mole, tell him. Right, exactly. (laughs) What's a caramel sauce like on a steak? Well, they use caramel in... Vietnamese cooking for savory okay. things. So yeah. I love that you have a spin for all of this. If you're just as confused as Zasha's husband, let me explain. To make sweet potato marshmallow casserole, you mash a bunch of roasted sweet potatoes, mix in plenty of butter, brown sugar, and pumpkin pie spices, and then you dump all of that sweet orange mush into a casserole dish, cover it with mini marshmallows, and then broil it until the little marshies are melted and the whole thing is golden brown. Where did this dish come from? Actually, a sweet potato casserole is a very, very old dish. And there's a version of it in the first American cookbook. So it has been around in print since the 1790s. That's Rick Rogers, author of Thanksgiving 101. But originally, it was like mashed sweet potatoes with some eggs, and it was more like pudding. Marshmallows is a very, very old candy. Been around since Egyptian times, 2000 BC. There really is a plant called the mallow, or it just looks like one of those big hibiscus plants with big flowers. But the sap of the mallow is very sticky. So someone realized that you could take the sticky sap and mix it with honey or sugar and turn it into candy. So that is how the marshmallow came into being. Then somebody in the late 1800s in America 
This is also the same two brothers that learned how to make Cracker Jack. Mm. They commercialized marshmallows. And in 1917, there was a company called the Angelus Marshmallow Company. And what they did is they put marshmallows on top of the classic sweet potato casserole for the first time. Back in the day, companies would hire recipe developers to come up with dishes that would help sell more of their products. They'd put these recipes on brochures, print them in women's magazines, or write on the package itself. And this is exactly what the Angelus Marshmallow Company did. So they went to the Boston Cookery School, which is where Fanny Farmer worked. But you probably do not know the name Janet McKenzie Hill. And Janet McKenzie Hill also worked for the Boston Cookery School. And so a lot of the recipes, the popularization that we get for marshmallows comes from that particular brochure. This is where the idea for Rocky Road ice cream came from. I love Rocky Road. Or maybe you've had like a southern fruit salad. Ambrosia. Marshmallows and yeah, well, yeah, ambrosia. So we have Janet McKenzie Hill to thank for really popularizing the marshmallows. Rick says so many of our favorite holiday dishes were created by companies to sell more products. Green bean casserole has a similar story. Wasn't that made by yes. someone at a brand? Yeah, so that was invented by Campbell Soup in about 1955 by a home economist whose name is Dorcas Riley. She was looking for a way to use cream of mushroom soup. I think I know what you're going to ask about next. The cranberry sauce. I mean, back to Zasha, canned or homemade. So I'm a little bit Switzerland when it comes to cranberry sauce. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. If I have to choose in a pinch, I'm going to go canned because I don't want to make homemade cranberry sauce. Uh huh. A mountain that I do not feel like climbing. And if they're both there, I'll honestly probably put both on my plate because I love a sauce. I eat way too much ketchup in my life. Condiments are probably, according to my doctor, too prevalent in my diet. But like... <laughs> your doctor knows about your condiment use? No, he definitely doesn't. Okay. I just recently <laughs> had my blood work with my yearly blood work done. And I'm sort of like, what's it going to be? I don't like, know. We found out I your have... blood type is ketchup. It's just ketchup <laughs> through your veins. My blood type is ketchup. Ketchup and coffee. That's the name of my next cookbook. Well, I encourage people to give the podcast a listen. You can find your last meal on every podcast player um, or you can go to the Cascade PBS website. It will take you there if you go to your last meal podcast dot com. And if you want to know where to start, some of my favorite episodes, yeah. John Waters, the director, who is a total oddball, he wants a single leaf of arugula for his last meal because he wants to be a tidy corpse. Oh my god! Remember earlier when I said it wasn't morbid? Sometimes <laughs> it sneaks in. That's just kind of gross and weird. That's a fun one to start with. And the episode with Jewel is really interesting because she grew up in the wilds of Alaska homesteading yeah. and they only ate what they could catch, kill, plant. Um, <laughs> and then she tells her story of coming to, quote, the mainland for school and just not understanding what this food is. Right. And her last meal, no spoiler because it says it in the title of each episode, is Bear Lard Biscuits. So oh. <laughs> there's something for everyone, I yeah. think. Whatever you're looking for, it's there. Thanks for listening to Crosscut Reports. This episode was reported by Rachel Bell. It was produced by Sarah Bernard and me, Maliha Sayed. The story editor was Ryan Famuliner. Our executive producer is Sarah Menzies. You can subscribe to Crosscut Reports wherever you listen. And whatever platform you're listening on, please review us. We'd love to know what you think of the show. Also, if you would like to support the work we do at Crosscut, whether it's our lineup of podcasts, the video docu-series we stream every week, or the in-depth reporting we deliver every day, go to crosscut.com slash membership. In addition to supporting our journalism, members receive complete access to the on-demand programming of Seattle's PBS station, KCTS 9. For the latest political, environmental, and culture news from the Pacific Northwest, visit crosscut.com. That's also where you'll find a text version of the story we discussed today. Crosscut Reports is a product of Cascade Public Media. 
I'm Maliha Sayed. We'll be back soon with another episode.